Hi everyone, my name is Louise Kocher. I'm one of the reporting radiographers here at Bath, and today we're going to be looking at adult elbow trauma radiograph image interpretation. We'll be covering simply the appearances of adult elbow radiographs and the sort of things that you would expect to see coming through A&E, so trauma. We won't be looking at paediatric elbows, this will be covered in a separate talk, and we also won't be discussing degenerative changes or other pathologies. We'll look at normal anatomy, some assessment lines that you need to be familiar with when assessing adult elbow radiographs, normal and abnormal soft tissue signs, as well as common and more unusual injuries as well. We'll begin by looking at an AP radiograph of an adult elbow. I've attached some bony landmarks here and I'll let you look at this in your own time. And a lateral as well. So the first assessment line that we'll discuss is the anterior humeral line. This runs down the anterior aspect of the distal humeral diaphysis and should bisect the anterior third of the capitellum. We use this line to assess for supracondylar fractures, which although are far more prevalent within the paediatric population, we are, do also see them within the adult population as well. If you use the anterior humeral line and more than or less than a third of the capitellum is bisected, you'll be looking at a displaced supracondylar fracture. The other assessment line that you need to be familiar with is the radial capitella line. This extends through the radial head and neck and it bisects the capitellum. The radial capitella line always runs through the, both the radial head and the capitellum, no matter what projection has been acquired as seen here in this oblique elbow as well. If the radio capitella line does not bisect both the capitellum and the radial head, we'll be looking at a radial head dislocation. This is an example of the normal appearances of the anterior fat pad. It is normal to be able to appreciate this on a lateral elbow and is not indicative of a fracture. It can be more prominent on some people compared to others. However, that's OK, that's normal for them. It is never normal to see the posterior fat pad. And if you can see this, this is indicative of a fracture. This is an example of abnormal soft tissue signs. As you can see, the anterior fat pad is displaced away from the distal humerus by about 45 degrees. And we can describe this as the sail sign. In the case of trauma, this very likely indicates a fracture present, however, not definitively so. We can now appreciate the posterior fat pad. And as I previously said, it is never normal to see the posterior fat pad. And in the case of trauma, this is always indicative of a fracture, even if you can't see it. This is what we would describe as a radiographically occult fracture, where there is a fracture present, although you just can't appreciate it on the radiograph. Frustratingly, however, the absence of various fat pads does not mean that there is no injury present, so don't be caught out. Just because you can't see a joint effusion does not mean that there is not a fracture on that X-ray. The injuries that we can see on elbow X-rays can be subcategorized into fractures, dislocations, and more complex fracture dislocation patterns as well. We'll start by looking proximally to the elbow joint. Humeral fractures tend to be very obvious, they're difficult to miss, and they're caused by high force injuries. I have also seen them before with a spiral twisting force in the case of arm wrestling. In this case, there is a transverse fracture of the mid humerus with posterior lateral angulation. This is an example of an adult supracondylar fracture. The mechanism of these fractures is frequently a Fouche injury, and although it's less commonly seen in adults, it's more likely seen within the elderly population as opposed to the young. When we use the anterior humeral line, you'll see that more than two thirds of the capitellum is being bisected. So this is an example of an anteriorly displaced supracondylar fracture. As I said, when we were talking about abnormal soft tissue signs, Note that the posterior fat pad is not actually present on this X-ray, although there is a fracture present. This is an example of a single condylar elbow fracture. 
Although the lateral condyle has been fractured here, it is of course possible to fracture the medial condyle as well. More, most likely caused by falls, these are quite unstable fractures. A much more obvious injury is in our intercondylar fractures. These are very unstable and form a Y-shaped fracture configuration. They're generally caused by high energy impact forces. Osteochondral injuries are very important injuries to be able to appreciate. When looking at these x-rays, the most obvious thing that you can see is a pronounced joint effusion. So already you should be thinking that there is an injury present. There is not an obvious injury present. Really force your eye around the bony contours of each bone and you will hopefully be able to appreciate the very subtle bony texture difference within the capitellum. This is an example of an osteochondral fracture of the capitellum. An osteochondral fracture is where a small piece of bone or potentially just the, bone, the cartilage surrounding the bone has fractured away from that articular surface. These are small injuries and they are subtle injuries. However, they are incredibly important to identify as missed osteochondral injuries can have quite poor prognoses. Radial head fractures are commonly seen through A&E. They are caused by Fouche injuries. And the most obvious thing that you should be able to appreciate again is the anterior and posterior joint effusion on the lateral elbow x-ray. So already you know that there will probably be an injury present even if you can't see it. The lateral elbow is quite a subtle example of a radial head fracture. And sometimes this is all that can be appreciated where there is a very subtle disruption of the bony cortex. It is a more obvious injury that you can see there on the AP X-ray. However, it is a good example of what you need to be aware what can what you can see on just a radial head fracture. They can be very very subtle. Olecranon fractures are generally not so subtle, They're caused by forced hyperextension or a direct impact, and they can be very displaced due to the att attachment of the triceps tendon. This is an example of a transverse oblique fracture of the olecranon. And again, you can't appreciate the posterior fat pad, although there is clearly an elbow fracture present. Coronoid fractures are frequently missed elbow injuries. This is because of the overlying bony structures. If this is an example of the importance of forcing your eye around the bony contours of each bone if you look down the distal humerus, you won't see anything. The round radial head, you won't see anything. And then force your eye around the contours of that ulna, and then you should be able to see that very subtle disruption of the coronoid. They are always subtle, so always make sure that you scrutinize this, this part of the x-ray on every elbow. This is an example of an avulsion of the triceps tendon. The image on the left is a previous radiograph and then this is what's happened after the patient has had a fall and there has been a fracture through that olecranon enthesophyte, which is displaced proximally. There is a large amount of soft tissue swelling present, which is another indicator of this injury. Another example of a tenderness avulsion which you might be able to see on an elbow x-ray is the insertion of the biceps tendon at the radial tuberosity. However, these are less frequently seen on elbow x-rays. Dislocations are another kind of injury that you may see coming through A&E. They are less common than a fracture, although also frequently occur alongside a fracture where there has been a bony impact when the joint has become disrupted. Frequently caused by high impact fouches, and there will probably be a joint effusion present, although they can be quite difficult to miss. These are quite obvious. Again, if you use your radio capitella line, you will see that the radio the head does not transect through that capitellum. This is an example of a dislocation of both the radio capitella and the ulnar trochlear joints, and the forearm has become displaced to the proximal radius and ulna.
More complex fracture dislocations. Um, this is an example of a Montegia fracture dislocation. These are unstable injuries, most commonly associated with the fall with the hand in pronation. You'll see that there is a fracture of the proximal ulnar diaphysis and also dislocation of the radial head. If you draw your radial capitella line, you'll see that it does not transect the capitellum. Again, these are difficult injuries to miss. You will see the fracture, although make sure that you appreciate the entirety of that injury. Draw your radio capitella line to make sure that you can identify this as a Montegia fracture dislocation. Although Galeazzi injuries are definitely not part of the elbow, it feels remiss to talk about a Montegia fracture dislocation without moving on to a Galeazzi fracture dislocation. These also are unstable injuries caused by foot with the elbow in flexion. And there's a fracture of the distal radial diaphysis with dislocation of the ulna at the distal radial ulna joint. What we're going to do now is have a look at some elbow x-rays, a test yourself. So this person has had a fall query fracture. In this case, you should have been able to see the olecranon fracture with anterior and posterior joint effusions present. Fall, unable to flex or extend, query fracture. I've included some blown up in images as well. Hopefully you've been able to see the subtle radial head fracture with anterior and posterior joint effusions present. So this person has tripped, fold, fell, tripped up a curve and landed on their elbow. There is dislocation of the ulnar trochlear joint and radial capitella joint with posterior displacement of the proximal radius and ulna. There is associated commonly to displaced fractures of the radial head and also the coronoid process. And there is a posterior joint fusion present as well. This person has been kicked by a horse and they have pain and swelling, query fracture. There is a fracture of the proximal ulnar diaphysis with dislocation of the radial head. So this is in keeping with a fra Montegia fracture dislocation. A less common mechanism, of course, this wasn't a foosh. This was a direct impact. However, this is the injury that has been sustained. There's a further fracture of the mid ulnar diaphysis as well. So we'll end just by looking at some useful resources. Um, Radiopedia is an excellent example of injuries and also bony appearances. If you're ever unsure, do visit that. Image Interpretation is an excellent website for further learning about bony, bony appearances and testing yourself. And also Keats, the normal Rowentgen variant. If you're ever unsure about what you're looking at, there is a, we have a copy in radiology. And also, of course, please come on down to the A&E hot reporting room. We'll happily look at any x-rays for you and go through any queries that you might have. I hope you've enjoyed this talk and it's been beneficial to you. Bye bye.